Hello everybody, welcome to New Life again. We're going to be in Revelations chapter 3 today. And I trust that it will be a blessing to you and to God and to others. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise today that your will and way will be had. As Jesus said and many others, not my will but thine be done today. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We pray for those that are in need in any way, shape, or form, physically, financially, emotionally, and spiritually, Lord. We know that you conquer all. In Jesus' name, amen. Chapter 3. Now we're dealing with, we went through um, several of the churches. We went through Ephesus, who lost their first love. We went through Smyrna, which was the persecuted church. We went through Thyatira, and we went through Pergamos. We see the financial, you lose your first love. Sometimes you get a persecuted church that's doing great things for God, despite their trials and tribulations. And if you're not faithful, if you're not being the church that God wants you to be, or even, matter of fact, the person you want to be in the Lord. You become a compromising Christian. You know, that you are uh, turned about with every way of doctrine, or every wind of doctrine, is what the King James says. That um, being a compromising person is not always good being a people pleaser person or a seeker friendly church is not what God's asking for us to do. Uh, we're not here to compromise. We get from from promise from the, uh, or I'm sorry, the compromising church to the corrupt church. Uh, the corrupt church went across the line. And now we have a dead church. In verse verse 1 of chapter 3, let's read. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write these things, says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. That's kind of like a white sepulcher that Jesus was talking about. On the outside, you look beautiful and you're painted and everything looks good but on the inside you're full of dead man's bones um, that's the, not the way we're supposed to live as Christians or as a church or as a nation or as a family or as an individual you have a name that you are alive but you are dead be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die they're not there yet, but they are dying, and some spots of theirs are, are dead. It's kind of like getting your leg cut off. On the outside, it doesn't look so bad, but on the inside, it's gangrene and maybe cancer or, or something like that. And it's not it's not dead, but it's almost there. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. R-E-P-E-N-T. Instead of respect, we need to repent unto God. Instead of demanding respect from other people for us, we should be repenting of our, of our proudness, of our, of our sins of any kind. Therefore, if you will not watch... I will come to you as a thief, and you not know, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. When you're dead, you can't participate in life, can you? When you're dead, you can't see the great things that God had in store for you because you're dead. Here's a few names at this church had been given. 
Let me see here. Repent, therefore, if you will not watch, I will come unto you uh, as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even Sardis, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me. There's just a few people left in this church. Just a few. Their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, white symbolizing purity and righteousness. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. We do not want our lives blocked out. The Lamb's book of life, the book of life. God is good, but God is righteous, and God is has right judgment. And I love it when people say, "Hey, well, you can't judge me, but God can." Well, if God if God's judging you, shouldn't you be scared enough with Him? First of all, yeah, that you don't have to worry about me judging you. But it's worse that God will judge you. Yes, you will be judged. I look at this, that Bible says that we can judge sin. The Bible does say that we can judge the motives of a person. The Bible does say that in order to... To be, how can I say it? In order, in, in order to be a good church, we cannot have bad people. And if we're not judging people, whether they're bad or good, by their works, because the Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. That is a form of judgment. That is the way that we can tell. If I'm not making sales where I'm working at right now, lazy boy, I will be judged and I will either be corrected, I'll probably be encouraged first, then corrected, I may get warnings, and finally if I'm still not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I will be fired. So it shall be with the church. So shall it be with individuals with God. If you're a child of God and you're not doing what God wants you to do, God will judge you. And God has given the right of every church to proceed with judgment for the express purpose of restoring them back in fellowship with God and with others. Have you a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled your garments? They shall walk with me in, uh, in white, for they are worthy. He oh, who overcomes will be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches. Do you really have an ear for God? Do I have an ear for God? Are we, are we just listening to the words and they pass through our brains with no thought of what the consequences are? We've seen the progression of some of these churches already, but God brings in a, uh, a good church. Smyrna was a good church. Now, let's read about the church of Philadelphia. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and now open and no one opens. I know your works. See, I set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, you have kept my word, and have not defiled my name, or denied my name. The Bible says if you deny the name of Jesus before man, he says, I will deny 
you before my father. But this church keep going. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not. But he, indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere. What did Jesus say, say if you love me? Keep my commandments. He said, if you love me, obey. He says, if you love me, don't deny me. Let's go on. Let me find it. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep from you from, you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. <coughs> There'll be a time of testing. There's a time for testing for everybody. Saved, lost, backslidden, agnostic, atheist, skeptic, young Christian, old Christian, rich or poor, whatever race or nationality that you claim to be. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. When you persevere, when you be, when you stay faithful, you will receive a new name. Abram received Abraham. Jacob received Israel. Saul became Paul, and many more. Excuse me. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I last but least give you probably the most talked about church in Revelations. The lukewarm church. The complacent church. The com more than compromising church. Listen. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness. Amen means I agree with you, God. I know your works that you are neither hot nor cold. I got that reversed. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich. I have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing. And I do not know that you are wretched, and miserable, and blind, and naked. That's what the church is today. They have everything. They have everything, but yet they're naked. They're poor. They're wretched. Many a man and a woman, movie star, sports man, rich man, even poor people have thought, I don't need God, look what, I've got everything, look, I made all of this, I worked hard for all this, it's mine, that's not the truth, it's all God's, you are all God's, he owns you. He does not want to have to just own you. He wants you to love him. You move from ownership to fellowship with God. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither hot, cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, 
and do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he says, I will come in to him and dine with him or sup with him in it. And he with me, to him, whoever comes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The last three churches in uh, chapter 3 was, one, the dead church. Because it was a natural progression from losing your first love to compromising to being corrupt to being dead. Why are these kind of mixed up? I don't know. It's the way that God told John to write them. Let's be the faithful church. The faithful church is oftentimes the persecuted church. Look at churches in China and Russia and Islamic countries all over the world. They're flourishing. They're not dead. They're not compromising. They're not corrupt. They haven't lost their first love. But let's not also be lukewarm either. Most people hate lukewarm. I just heated up my coffee just a few minutes ago probably 20 minutes ago it's still warm enough to drink without going ugh you know the steam isn't on it no more so it's not hot but it's not lukewarm yet but if I set this in here like I did this earlier uh, in the day as I was studying I put my cup down and I got up and I walked away and guess what? I came back this afternoon and it was cold. A lot of people drink iced coffee. A lot of people drink lots of hot coffee. But very few people drink lukewarm coffee because it doesn't taste right. Neither should you or I be lukewarm. We should be on fire for God. We should be giving Him glory and honor and praise. And he wrote the, to these seven churches these letters as an example for them and also for us. This is not an old book. It's not an antiquated book where nothing in here does not help you. Everything in here helps you. That's called classics. The Bible is a classic. It is a collector's item far beyond anything else in silver and gold or jewelry or emeralds or diamonds or metals or money. Let's get busy in the kingdom of God. Let's not be lukewarm, nor dead, nor corrupt, nor compromising, nor losing our first love. In Jesus' name, amen.